Welcome everybody to our Pink Stanley session today where you'll learn to cook a cauliflower in four different ways. So the only ingredient you need for today is a cauliflower, although I have been speaking with James before and he's cheekily also bought a shallot um, and a little bit of spice as well. So if you have, if you do have those, um, James will let you know if you do need to grab anything else as well. But you'll notice that I'm I'm not in the kitchen. I'm not the one doing the cooking. I don't think this um, cooking a cauliflower in four ways would go well if I was doing it. Um, so we do have James with us today, who is obviously a registered nutritionist and also a vitality um, coach. But before I bring him on screen, um, please do post any comments you have today. If you want to, you know, uh, ask James any questions as we go through, um, go through today, whether that be about cooking or anything generally in terms of nutrition, um, throw them, throw them into the comments box, and I'll, I'll make sure to ask James them. And we also have the ability to pop them up on screen as well if you want a bit of a, a bit of a shout out as well. So cauliflowers at the ready, put any questions in there um, that you do have. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be here alongside James. I'll be giving him a bit of a grilling in terms of questions while he's grilling um, grilling the uh, cauliflower. So James, how are you doing today? Hi everyone, I'm good. Thanks Johnny. Ready to go. Hopefully Thanks, everyone's got their cauliflower at the ready like you say. Fingers crossed. And do we need anything else? I saw you do have a shallot and some spices. What are the optional ingredients? Yeah, so, I mean, you can just have it normal, but the reason why I chose cauliflower is because it is quite plain. So it doesn't really have... Some people like the flavour, some people like the texture, but it's really good and it takes on a lot of flavour. So any spices that you can find in your cupboard, so feel free to go and raid the cupboards and get some some different spices. So Cinnamon? things like cumin things like paprika chili whatever you want it's completely yeah. up to you sounds good and how are we are you going to reveal how we're cooking the cauliflower as we go or are you going to tell us now and then i'll give you a, a brief run through so i said four ways i uh, don't know why i said that originally because now i've got to think of four ways to cook the cauliflower. <laughs> um but there is loads of different ways i mean you'll see loads of recipes out there there's not going to be any cauliflower steak or anything like that. It's not to use as a substitute. Some of these are going to be, you, you could use as like a side. You could have it with something else, or you can have it completely on its own. So if, for instance, you're following a vegetarian or a vegan um, sort of diet and lifestyle, then this is great for you. So all I'm going to do is going to cut it into three. So I'm going to cut um, the cauliflower in half. That half is going to be roasted with some spices in the oven. And then that's all you need to do. Then you can just pop that in the oven and away you go. I'll carry on with the rest. Then I'm going to cut the other half into another half. So it's going to be two quarters. And I'm going to uh, use just the florets of one bit. So pick the florets out. out. I'll put that in um, with some, um, I'll just put that in some boiling water. And then I'm going to put some um, tandoori spice on that. So like sort of an Indian flavor. And then that will go back in the oven as well. They're going to roast them. And you can add that to certain things you can have that as a side or you can add that to things like curries etc and then the other quarter is going to be um, oh, i'm going to cut really really fine so you'll see me chopping away if you don't fancy chopping it you can just grate it and as you grate it you'll get loads of little fine bits and you can use that like as if it was a rice or couscous and i'm going to fry that in a pan with a little bit of onion um, and just some flavorings in there and then the fourth way so making sure we're using the whole vegetable, obviously trying to be a little bit more sustainable. Um, I'm going to use all the leaves. So I've taken a lot of the leaves off. There's still some left on there. And I'm going to make a quick coleslaw with that. So again, you can use that. You can put that on your sandwiches. You can put that in with like a salad or some chicken and rice and stuff like that just to have as a side. So four different things coming out of one cauliflower. That makes nice. sense? That's good work. It's good work. And what what temperature do people need to put the oven on if they're using the oven? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I haven't put my oven on yet, so don't worry. You're not oh, okay. Sorry. I uh, so I'm going to put my oven on. You can put it on around about 180 to 200. You can grill it if you wanted to, and obviously it takes a little bit less time, but then you might be tempted. It might end up burning it. So to keep it under control, around about 180 to 200, just pop your oven on now, and then I'll get started on the first bit. So all you need to do... I just rip the leaves off and when you rip the leaves off you'll get like quite you'll get this basically the nicer bit of the leaves so you won't be able to take so that hard stalky bit off off the bottom when you have that bit at the bottom obviously that's really it's really quite bitter and doesn't really taste very nice if you want to use the whole vegetable and make sure nothing goes to waste cut that bit out and you can use it and put it in like a stock so put it in 
with you know things like carrot peelings, potato peelings, put it in um, just some boiling water and you can use that to make a soup. You can use that in things like gravies or whatever sort of like sauces you want to use. You can use that stock for that. So that's really, really good. So all I'm gonna do is cut that bit out. So be careful with a sharp knife. I have a lot of practice with this. I say that it's quite a big cauliflower to get through. Nice. If we got any kids watching, you know, feel free to get your parents to do the uh, the heavy yeah, chopping yeah. work. I think it's even, it's good. My, even my wife makes sure that I do that she I do this. She doesn't do it. <laughs> you got to make sure your knife your knife is nice and sharp. So I just cut down, and all that'll do should just pull out, and that's the bit you'll be left with. So that's like just the middle of the of the cauliflower. It's quite hard, but you can pop that, like I say, into a stock, so into a pan full of water with a load of other bits of, uh, loads of other bits of vegetables. So then you'll be left with, the cauliflower should stay pretty whole, like you see there. And then all I'm gonna do, like I say, cut it in half. And you'll have that. Nice, that's a good looking cauliflower. It looks like a brain from the side. Yeah, it does. If you, if, you, if you like the thought of that, then definitely. don't be turning people off. Bro off uh, Sorry, yeah. Off if you didn't like a cauliflower already, you definitely don't now. <laughs> exactly. You're not helping me here, Johnny, at all. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, James. Yeah. So all I've done with that, just pop it into a bowl. And this is where you get your spices. You can be really, really adventurous with this. So try something that you might not have tried before. If you go to the shops with your parents, a great way of you getting involved is to just go down the spice aisle and take something that you like the sound of and then you can try it out if you don't like it don't do it again but if you do like it then it's really good to add to different things so all i've got here it's called zatar it's a spice mix spice mix so it's made up of sesame seeds things like oregano um shumac loads of different flavors it comes from i think it's from um sort of the middle east um, and north africa really really tasty so explore the world through flavor that's what i like to do so just pop that in the bowl pop that over the cauliflower and then what i didn't do is actually get a little bit of oil so you need a little bit of sunflower oil or vegetable oil whatever you've got just pop that on top or in the bowl with everything and then this is where you can get your hands stuck in so really mix this in Make sure it covers the whole of the top of the cauliflower and it should make like a bit of a paste with the um, the spices, with the oil. But it basically means that it gets into all of those little nooks and crannies in and around the florets. So I'll be interested to know, Johnny, if anyone out there doesn't like cauliflower and they just think, well, I don't like it because of the way it's cooked. Or if you've tried anything different with cauliflower, that I might be interested in, and I could try that mm. whole as well. Yeah, let us know in the in the comments. I think cauliflower is one of those things that I don't know. It can be quite boring, can't it? Because it, as you yeah. said before, it doesn't really it doesn't really taste of of too much. It's just kind of a white bland vegetable. So I'm I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing what you can come up with. Yeah. Today. So what you'll end up with is all of that put onto the cauliflower, and as that cooks, all that flavour, all the oils from things like the sesame seeds from the spices, they'll all start melting into the cauliflower and it should be really, really tasty. So I'll leave that in the bowl. It's going to wash my hands. James, we had, we've had someone already say, oh, I never thought of, um, I thought never thought of using the leaves. So obviously you're making um, some coleslaw with the leaves. Are there, are there any parts of like vegetables that are better for us than others, like nutritionally? Like is there, I know some people say, you know, on potatoes, like the outside is better than the inside for you. Are there, is there anything to that? Yeah, definitely. Things like um, the peel of things like carrots, um, things like, as you say, potatoes, they're full of fiber. Fiber is really good for our digestion. So when you eat, obviously you've got to make sure you sit comfortably, you're sitting down at the table. Our digestion is really, really important. It makes sure that we can get all the nutrients we need out of food. So things like um, yeah, the skin or the peel on things like carrots, root vegetables, um, I, you know, sweet potatoes, they've all got peel on. A lot of people will take that off, but that's really, really good for us. So it's good to try and leave that on. Obviously it depends how you're cooking it, but yeah, most times when you're cooking food, just try and use as much of it as you can. And things like peel 
yeah, they're definitely really good food, full of fiber. Nice, cool. So all I've got is just a, a, a roasting tin. You can pop that cauliflower on, just pop it in the middle of the tray, and then that's just gonna go into the oven. Depending on the size of the cauliflower, that should take, I don't know, about 20 minutes or so. Um, so five minutes, not even five minutes to prepare it, pop it in the oven, 20 minutes, and then that is uh, like, you can do that whole, you can do it in half, or you can do it in quarters and roast it a little bit quicker. It's completely up to you. But that's a really quick and simple way of doing cauliflower. So that's one down. So what did they say? I've got more, three more to go? Three more. Okay, let's give this a go. Number two. So, cut this one in two. So uh, you should end up with two quarters. And by the way, for those thinking who would have a meal of entirely cauliflower, this isn't a meal of entirely cauliflower. This is four different ways of using it. So don't feel like you have to eat the whole cauliflower in one sitting. So what I've got is, yeah, just cut that uh, half into two. So I've got two quarters. I'm going to put one to one side and I'll do this one first. This one is going to be um, with tandoori. So what you'll end up with is you can just pick off little florets like that. So all it does it should just snap off quite easily. Don't need to use a knife. It'll just snap off. And then they might get to the end bit, so the bit near the stalk, where you'll end up with a big bit. There you can just cut off that hard of it. Again, you can use that. You can still use that in um, when you boil the rest of the florets. And it, you can even mix that into things like uh, into mashed potato. So you put like a topping on things like cottage pie, shepherd's pie. Um, mix those hard bits. Even that bit, if you take sort of half of that away so not the, the horrible bit that's been in the ground but take that stalky bit you can cut it up really small put it into things like mashed potato and just gives you a little bit more goodness so like say trying to use the whole vegetable if we can so with that i'm going to pop that into just a little pan i'm only going to boil it for sort of five minutes um doesn't need too long and again that's one thing that tends to happen when we have vegetables, we tend to overboil it. You know, you end up cooking all the nutrients out of it. Goes mushy as well, it makes it taste even worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you end up getting rid of all that flavor, that's really good. So we'll boil that. And you remember I said, with some of these harder bits, you might want to make a stock. Mm -hmm. So if you're boiling the cauliflower, you don't need to pour that water away. You can keep that water. You can add things to it, like um, your carrot peel, like I said, or the odds, you know, the tops off your carrots, um, some of the potato stuff that you might cut off. You can put all that into the into the water once you're finished with it, and it just makes that stock, and you can use that for other things, things like curries, things like gravies, um, even pasta sauces you can use it for as well. So when you cook your pasta sauce, add some water in, and it just gives it a little bit of a different flavour. So hopefully it'll give you a few more ideas I'm helping you out, Johnny. There's loads, loads of stuff. I never thought, you know, you could use a simple cauliflower for uh, for so much. Forget the leaves. I don't think you could use a stalk for for something. And the, I think you like buy veg stock, don't you, for like certain meals? But you don't really know. I mean, I know how stock is made, but you don't really think about making it yourself, do you? Or you might. No. I'm not sure. I haven't. <laughs> no, no, definitely. I think one one thing you do. when I used to work in a restaurant and used to work in the kitchen a little bit. Sometimes I used to work front of house, but used to help out in the kitchen when they were short and literally everything would go into the stock pot so you know even like off cuts um of the vegetables and stuff they put into the veg stock pot and then things like even the fish and the meat um obviously you don't make a fish stock and then you'd make a meat stock so like a beef stock or a chicken stock and all of that you would have had they have these stock pots ongoing so when they were making certain foods you know all of that's got not you know very little has gone to waste so it's really, really important to try and make sure that there's not much going to waste. Um, it makes everything go further. So parents should be happy to know it can help um, sort of reduce the cost of your, of your shopping bill. Um, and kids, it gives you an opportunity to try something you might not have tried before. Again, I'm not expecting everyone to like everything. Uh, you might not like it, but try it and see how you get on. Um, and hopefully, you know, it'll give you a few more ideas. So hopefully I've helped you out, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, and saves the planet as well, right? The more you can, yeah, the more you can use. You don't want to 
chuck food away if you could be using it or eating it for for other dishes <clears throat> exactly exactly and that's it the more we do to help the planet the better and um that's another thing you know if you um i don't know what everyone's garden situation is like but you can use things like the leaves if you don't fancy making anything with it the leaves the stalk all those odd bits that you don't have you can put onto like a compost heap um, and you can have that at the bottom of the garden and then you can even start growing your own fruits and vegetables with that compost so you know things like that might be really beneficial if you want to really give that nice. especially now the spring's coming really good time to try and maybe produce some of your own vegetables and um you know you can start to eat seasonally which is another way of keeping the cost down and helping the planet as well so hopefully that will give you some ideas to try and go with i don't know what you're like johnny whether you're any good at gardening uh not good at it i don't mind it um but yeah what, what are you doing now james can you po point the camera down a little bit so we can see yeah, yeah. Um, see what you're doing there you go cool so what's the plan now this is the last bit of the of the actual uh, vegetable if you like and all i'm doing is just slicing this up and then i'm going to just chop it up nice and small so when i say nice and small you'll see it's sort of falling apart as i'm cutting it and what this creates is like a fiber if you like so it looks a bit like rice or couscous or something like a grain. Um, so you can use this to make like a um, sort of like special fried rice, um, obviously without the rice, or you can mix this in with rice. You can use it to mix in with um, uh, couscous. You can use it to mix in with noodles, um, whatever you like. So it just goes up nice and small. You'll end up with a stalk. Um, so... If you get that hard bit, you can carry on cutting that up because it's quite hard. I'll just pop it in with the rest of that stuff that I've just done to make the the tandoori, um, the tandoori uh, cauliflower. So is that, the, is that the heart of the cauliflower? Because my, whenever my uh, fiance cooks and has that makes cauliflower or chops cauliflower up, she always I don't know if it's weird or not if other people do it, but eats the heart of the cauliflower. Is that that what that was? Um, so no, that that'll be the heart. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, she so likes yeah, that. I don't know if that's a normal thing. Um, but the when you cut a so let me just get a piece. So this is a, a piece of cauliflower that's been sliced quite thin. But as you'll see, the top of it's like quite flowery, so it looks like a flower, so cauliflower. And then the middle bit you've got is sort of quite hard. So um, that is sort of the bit that you might eat as well. But that's the bit that tends to take a little bit more cooking. So, you know, that might be a bit when you have your cauliflower, it might be a little bit hard and uh, not very enjoyable, but it's important that that's the bit that's gonna take on a lot of flavor as well. So all I'm doing, do you want me to point that camera down again? Yeah, so let's, have a, let's have a look at the knife skills. So all I'm doing <laughs> is just cutting this up really, really fine. And when it, the smaller you cut up vegetables, the quicker it cooks. And you can try different methods of cooking. So like you'll see here, I'm boiling some, I'm roasting, and this I'm going to fry in the frying pan. So I've got too much actually for me chopping board, would you believe? <laughs> this is only a quarter of it. I don't know why I picked up such a big cauliflower. So you got more to eat. Sorry, uh, I was going to say, you'll see at the moment, there should be a lot more cauliflowers on the shelves because they're in season. Ah. Uh, so it's really, really good to try and have that seasonal veg because you'll get better quality and like I say, you won't be traveling halfway across the world to come to your plate. Yeah, better better for the environment. So that should be okay at the moment. And what's, what, we, what are we making with this one again? So what's this going to end up being? So I'm going to do like sort of a, um, almost like a couscous if you like. So I'm just going to use half the shallot. So half the shallot's going to go in with this. And then the other half is going to go in to the coleslaw. Um, so all I've got is a frying pan. That frying pan just goes on a sort of a medium heat. You can put it on really, really high, but it means that you have to keep a real eye on it. So I'll put it on quite a low heat. So I'll pop that frying pan on. And then all you need to do is pick some spices that you might like. So you can use... If you wanted to do this like a sort of a Asian style, sort of a special fried rice, you can use things like soy sauce, fish sauce, um, or even you can buy sauces from the shops, things like hoisin, um, and you can make a really tasty like special fried rice. 
I'm going to do it again because I've put that uh, those sort of um, Middle Eastern fi- uh, flavors on the whole or the half roasted cauliflower. I'm going to use similar flavors in this. So it's going to be more like a couscous, like sort of a Middle Eastern couscous rather than um, sort of an Asian style. But it's completely up to you what flavors you're using. So my pan's on. I'll just pop all that in. And you should start to hear it sizzling a little bit. Maybe not from all the way over there, but I can hear it sizzling here. Nice. And this is so these are things that obviously this wouldn't, as you said, you don't have to eat a whole cauliflower in every, uh, the whole cauliflower for your meal, but also like a, your cauliflower wouldn't be your meal. But have you got any like recommendations of what cauliflower would go well with? So, like, what, what meal would you put? Would you add this? Obviously, like your um, the cauliflower you're adding the Indian spices might go with a nice curry or something, maybe. But what what about the other ones? Yeah. So what? Well, I'll tell you what I'm having tonight. So making sure none of this goes to waste, I'm pretty much having cauliflower for my tea um, <laughs> or for my dinner. So I'm going to have the half roasted cauliflower. I'm going to slice up. So as it's roasted, you'll have all the flavors from it, and I can just slice it. And I'm going to put that with um, roasted beetroots. Uh, roasted um, sweet peppers um, and then I'm going to put uh, have it like a flatbread so you can have like a flatbread and you have it like a kebab um, and you can add things like you, you, know, you can put like salads with it so I could put my coleslaw with it um, you could have different sauces with it and it basically like it's like a nice kebab so a nice veggie kebab you can also if you don't want the whole cauliflower you could put things like chicken with it and um, then that's really tasty having chicken with cauliflower. Um, like you say, the Indian spices, you can put, you can, you can make it a, a completely vegetarian curry. So you can use like chickpeas or you can have it just adding it into a, things like a chicken curry um, or even things like lamb um, goes really nice in it. With the, you know, like I said, if you wanted to put cauliflower in things like mashed potato, you can have that on, um, you know, um, what did I say before? Cottage pie or shepherd's pie, you can use that for, um, and it goes really nice. You know, mashed potato, whatever you'd have mashed potato with, just add a bit of cauliflower to it. So it's something that you can have with. It's quite versatile, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I suppose it just depends what you add add to it, isn't it? As we said, like cauliflower doesn't taste of too much, so it can go in lots of things. So uh, Jane's just asked. I put the question on the screen as you were chatting there, but did you put any oil in that frying pan, or is that just on its I own? Haven't, I haven't just yet. Mine's like, I've got a really good non-stick frying pan, um, but it means that it browns it quite quickly. Um, but you can put a little bit of oil in. If you find it's burning, you can put a little bit of water in. But trying to make it as healthy as you can do, you can pop a little bit of oil in or a little bit of water. Um, I'll pop a little bit of oil in mine, um, and then that should sort of cook it quite nicely. So only it needs a tiny drop, and then that should sort of brown up quite nicely. So I don't know if you can see that. Nice. Looks like popcorn. Nice. That's good. And do you recommend any sorts of oils? Like, are there better oils for you than others? Or I know some people have said in the past, you know, butter's better for cooking because it's more stable. Or what's the what's the deal with the with the cooking oils? Yeah, well, cooking oils. I mean, there's no set oil that's best for you. I mean, olive oil is is good for you because it's come from the med- Mediterranean diet. But all oil, it's around about the same amount in calories, so it's still going to give you all that energy. Um, you know, things like linseed oil, rapeseed oil, they, um, you can put them at higher temperatures, which is really good. It means they don't break down into sort of saturated fat, um, which isn't so good for our arteries and our, our blood. So, you know, oils that have a high, what's called a burn point, so they can be heated quite high. Things like linseed oil, rapeseed oil, vegetable oil, sunflower oil, all of those you can use to cook with. Um, you know, things like butter, if you use butter, try not to use too much of it because that does burn quite a, a low point and same as um, olive oil, try not to cook on high heat with olive oil. If you are cooking with olive oil, try and do it at sort of a low heat. Nice. Good so tips. hopefully Good that tips. helps people out. Yeah, yeah. How, how's it going? Are they, are they nearly done? So these are the bits I'm going to have with my tandoori. So all I need a slotted spoon to get these out of the water and like i said don't throw away the water the water is going to be you, know, you can use that for things like stock and um, use it for things like gravy 
um, try not to waste anything. So all that's done, I'll just go in that bowl. Um, so I'll just put that in a bowl just to cool down a little bit. With the water out of that pan, you can use it to add to the frying pan to make that cauliflower cook a little bit quicker. What you've got with vegetables, obviously steam will cook it, water will cook it, and just direct heat will cook it. But direct heat, will might you might end up burning and, and singeing it, so it might go a little bit brown. Add a little bit of water to the pan. It means that obviously it takes a little bit um, takes a little bit of heat away as well. Clever. So all I've got left to do now is my use my leaves. So I've got a shallot. I'm going to put half of the shallot in the frying pan with um, the sort of the, the rice, the rice that I've made. And then the other half I'm going to use for the coleslaw. I have to concentrate this bit. I'm cutting onions. <laughs> end up Don't cry. Don't cry. It's fine. But it's going well, James. Don't cry. It's okay. I am well, well versed in cutting onions, so. <laughs> I might not be right, so you might be in luck. So I've got worse that shallot. Than the reason a shallot is really like quite sweet compared to an onion. An onion is sweet anyway, but a shallot is a little bit sweeter. So I really like the flavour of it. And plus you can cut it a little bit smaller so it cooks a little bit quicker. So you know there's a few things with cooking. You want it to be relatively easy to do, you want it for it to be relatively quick, and you want it to be relatively cheap. That's the good thing about vegetables is you can cook them quick. You know, they're relatively cheap, uh, providing you're buying in season. Um, and they are relatively simple to cook as well. So hopefully this will show that you can use um, vegetables quite easy. So with my uh, boiled um, cauliflower, I'm just going to pop some spices on that. And then you can just mix that around the bowl. And then that you can just either pop in a frying pan if you wanted to, just to have it as a side um, on the side of things like you know um, chicken tikka, whatever you want. Um, but I'm going to put this in the oven just to save time, just to get it out of the way. And again, to save on washing up, you can use the same tray you used before. So the tray that has got the half cauliflower on. Let's see how that's looking. So that should start to brown up quite nicely. That's looking good. And then I'm just going to pop the rest of that on there. So that's just used a tandoori spice mix, which is, um, you, know, so you can buy that from the shops already made up, or you can make it yourself with um, things like cumin, coriander, um, some chili. But again, Completely up to you which flavors you want to use. And you're making you're making a couple of uh, obviously a couple of different versions. If people, for example, if you use a whole cauliflower and you don't necessarily want to eat it all in one day, how long would like a vegetable last for? Could you eat it the next day, or is it something you have to eat on the day? Yeah, so I mean, uh, when you're cooking it, obviously the more if you cook it and leave it, then it will obviously take less time, you know, you won't be able to eat it straight away. You won't be able to eat it like sort of three days later. But if you buy it, so the way I've done it here, so I've cut half because there's only two of us in the house, so we'll only have half um, for our meal tonight. It means that that'll all go. And then the other half you can save, you know, three, four days later. Yeah. The things with vegetables is obviously they have a, a shelf life and it's better to eat them fresher. So the more fresh you eat them, the better. The other thing you can do is you can freeze it straight away. So you can freeze vegetables straight away to keep that freshness and then just take it out of the frost. Things like this um, the in the frying pan that I've done, you could do that, cook it, um, and then you can let it cool down, and then you can freeze it. And because you've cut it really small, when you bring it back out of the freezer, you can put it straight back into a pan to warm through. Um, so you could do it that way. Um, or you can cut it up really small and just freeze it straight away and just make it making sure that you sort of plan ahead when you're doing that cool so best option is try and 
you know, cut it up as you get it before cooking it, but you can cook it and then still use it later as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, use it as quickly as you can to make it make sure it's fresh. Um, but yeah, if you want to freeze it, it's just a good way of doing it. Or even buying frozen is just a good way of making sure you're getting everything you need. So I'm just going to turn that off. That is gone a little bit browner. I don't know if you can see that with the right, camera. Yeah, so I put that to one side. And then all I've got left to do is the coleslaw so what you'll see with a cauliflower is you'll have some leaves that are from the inside which are a little bit lighter and you have some from the outside which are a little bit darker and you can see the difference in that really yeah yeah um the ones that are darker tend to be closer to the outside so what you'll end up with is in the middle that middle bit is quite hard so what you need to do is with the knife just go along the stalk and cook the cut that bit off so you'll end up with a, a bit like that so we're not using that bit or we are you can but i wouldn't that bit's quite uh, i could go into the stock pan yeah that one's for the stock pan so nice. we'll pop that in the stock pan and then you'll be left with two little bits which is a bit like lettuce or cabbage i suppose some of the ones from the inside you could use all of that because that's a little bit uh, a little bit less tough so if i get some of these Go in and then I'll make my coleslaw with that. So putting those bits in the middle, um, those stalky bits, they can go into the stock pan. And then I just keep the nice leaves. A lot of people don't use the leaves. And it was actually, I was watching an episode of MasterChef. Um, I think it was MasterChef. And the guy made a coleslaw with the leaves. Um, and it was, I've never ever thought about it before. Hmm. So... I started to do it. It was really, really nice. I'm using a shallot today. Um, you can use like things like spring onions, um, or you can use yeah an actual white onion or red onion, depending on your preference. Um, so you'll end up with a few of these leaves. I'm not going to do them all. I have got more leaves there, but otherwise I'll have too much coleslaw. So I'll just point that camera down. So when you've got it got all these bits of leaves together so quite a few there and then all you need to do is you can roll it up if you want to so roll it all up into one and then just go along with a knife and cut nice thin strips obviously the thinner you cut it the less sort of chewy it will be um, if you cut it quite thin it's quite thick so those slightly stalkier bits that I mentioned that are in the um, outer leaves. That's why we, th we tend to put them in the stock pot. Um, but when you cut it quite thinly, see there's still some stalky bits in it. Oh, but yeah. When you mix that with things like mayonnaise um, or even if you, if you pickle it, so you can pickle it in things like vinegar and water. Um, but all that's quite thin. So that's going to go into that bowl. So yeah. when you when you get shop bought coleslaw, you do get some crunchy bits in there, don't you? Oh yeah, and it's completely up to you what you like. You know, if you want it a little bit crunchy, then great. Um, if you're not so fussed on having it crunchy, then don't cut it a little bit thinner. So all I've done is put that um, cauliflower in there, the cauliflower leaves, and um, we've still got plenty left. Um, and then all I'm going to do is finally slice my. Nice sweet slot. Again, making sure I don't cry and also don't cut off my fingers. So, like I say, you can use a shallot, you can use an onion, you can use um, a spring onion, but just pop all that into that bowl. So, this is really easy one to do um, for those of you obviously all at home, not in school. You know, this will keep in the fridge for a couple of days. Um, and you can have it on sandwiches, you can have it on, I don't know, even a burger if you wanted a burger, so homemade burgers, um, or even having it with things like um, like salads and stuff to make it a little bit more tasty. So all that's gone in there. So I've done, put on the end of my shallot in the stock pan. So I've got, I can say, all that in there. All I'm going to put in is some mustard, Again, completely up to you if you like or don't like mustard. A little bit of mustard and then a squirt of mayonnaise. 
And that's it. Make you make your own. I'm not making my own coleslaw. <laughs> no, 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 make your own coleslaw. I wouldn't expect you to make your mayonnaise. Well, I mean, it's not. It's apparently not that difficult to make. Um, no, I think I've we we made mayonnaise a little while ago. It didn't taste like shop bought stuff. It was quite. I can't remember what we put in it now, but it was quite tart. But it's fairly easy to do. Yeah, it's just. just yeah, you've got to have the right stuff. You want to have good good olive oil for it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah, it's just egg, egg oil and something else. I can't remember what it is. But yeah. Some seasoning. That's what's always good. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of salt in it. And don't tell my wife, but I'm going to put a bit of pepper in it because I like pepper. <laughs> nice. You're the chef. You can choose. Yeah. If she, if she doesn't like it, she should cook it herself. <laughs> um, so, yeah, all that's just mixed in together. And then, again, it's completely up to your, your taste and how you want it, but you can put more mayonnaise in if you want more mayonnaise. I've just put probably about a tablespoon of that, um, but obviously I'm only making this for, for two people. If you want to make it for more, um, then obviously put a little bit more mayonnaise in. Obviously, double it if you're doing it for four. But if you were to use all all of these leaves, um, it probably do about you know depending on the size of the cauliflower, but you'd probably be able to do it for four to six people. You'd be able to make a coleslaw for. Um, at the moment, obviously not having people around, but it's something that I'll use when I'm having a barbecue with friends. Just making sure I'm using everything, things like uh, vegetarian and vegan friends. I'll make sure I do a, a cauliflower on the barbecue and things like that. Coleslaw goes really nice with that. So, yeah, completely up to you, but some things that you can try um, along the way. So, what time are we on? Five past Perfect. five. Way over. It's all right. Just about that. Do you want to run us quickly through? So, what have we made out of that one cauliflower, James? Run us through the end, end products. So, I'll take these out of the oven. So, what we've got is a half-roasted, sort of Middle Eastern, um, Zatar-flavoured, cauliflower well that looks good and then i've done some tandoori spiced cauliflower florets nice we've got some cauliflower rice mix so you can put more vegetables with that which i'm going to do later on so um like i say i'm going to put some roasted pepper and roasted beetroot with that and then we've got a coleslaw with cauliflower leaves so that's just some cauliflower um you can't see it there, can you? No, it's yeah, it's good. I can see it. Some, some shallot as well. So nice. really simple, really easy things to do. Hopefully really easy. And um, hopefully something you can try at home. Um, just experiment with veg is a really good way to do it and making sure we're using all of it when, when we do. Definitely. Awesome. That's absolutely amazing. So thank you so much, um, James, for joining us and showing us how you can be a bit more inventive with, you know, a simple color. Obviously, Jamie's used cauliflower today, but you could, I'm sure, do this with uh, loads of different uh, vegetables. And I know I've learned a lot. Not only have we made cauliflower four ways, we've also started a, a stock pot as well. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely loads going on. And, you know, be good to um, feel free to chuck your guys' comments in. Um, but, yeah really great way to, to stay healthy make healthy food a little bit more tasty because sometimes you know just vegetables can be quite bland but some easy ways to make them tastier there and obviously it helps the environment um as well in terms of not wasting the food and using as much as possible and it's just a good way as well if you've got um if you're watching and you're your kid just get involved in the kitchen um and start cooking some some vegetables and make them make them tasty and, and a little bit easier to eat um, but yeah thank you everyone for for watching and please do join in the rest of our events we have louise butler um doing her pilates on thursday so please do join in for that um but other than that thank you so much james for for being our, our chef today and teaching us and uh, enjoy enjoy your dinner tonight and thank you everyone yeah. for watching and enjoy your enjoy your cauliflower later on as well <laughs> yeah. see you later everyone cheers james bye cheers bye